KTAR, Eyes on Parenting. Kids these days, am I doing enough? Am I doing too much? This is KTAR's Eyes on Parenting. I'm Corbin Carson. Today I'm joined by Pearl Chang Esau, President, CEO of Expect More Arizona, and it's almost back to school time. I know my wife, second grade teacher, she starts August 8th. So what are some things that parents can do to start getting their kids ready for back to school? Great, thanks so much for having me. Parents and families play such an important role in helping their kids uh, get prepared for back to school and really setting them up to be on a track for success for the whole year. Um, and and it's, it can be quick and easy. And there's things as simple as just making sure that your kids are getting back into the routine. And, and we would encourage um, starting that like a, at least a week before school starts. That's transitioning from whatever your summer schedule was, probably crazy and hectic, um, back to scheduled meal times, bed times, um, wake up times when they're going to have to wake up to get to school. So that's one really easy way. Um, a second thing would just be um, setting some goals with your child for the year. You know, setting high expectations, talking about um, what your kid wants to improve on that year. Maybe it's getting an A in math, or maybe it's turning in all your homework on time, or um, maybe it's um, studying for tests more in advance and not procrastinating. So really good to just help your child get focused for some key things that they really want to work on that year. Um, and then finally, another idea would just be um, continuing learning at home. And so whether it's things as easy as you know reading to or with your child for 20 minutes every day, um, to practicing some math skills, like maybe having them help um, plan the next family outing. You know, how many miles are you going to have to go? How much is the gas going to cost? Um, how much will we spend at this place? How much should we budget? There's some really easy ways that parents and families can help cr create that learning environment as an ongoing thing inside and outside of school. Um, and we have lots of uh, simple tips for how to do that on our website at todayandaz.org. Perfect. So I really don't have anything else to say. You said it all. And well, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no. So uh, tell me a little bit. Uh, um, the whole summer. Give me give me an idea of how parents can actually do this. I mean, let's just assume my oldest kid. He plays video games all the time. So let's. He's been up till four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. Or let's even say suggest my younger kids that aren't even in the frame of mind of school. What are some What are some things they can do if they're getting some pushback? Uh, I just want to continue being in summer schedule. <laughs> yes, I'm having this challenge as well as my daughter is going to kindergarten for the first time this year. Mine too. Yeah. Oh, son, but <laughs> kindergarten. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it is definitely a very different schedule. I mean, I think one of the things is just having a discussion to help the child prepare. And um, for kids who have already been to school in the past, they already have an idea of what it looks like. So maybe it's just having a conversation about, like, you know, um, do you remember what worked best for you um, for what, you know, when we go to sleep, um, what time we wake up, and just kind of reminding them of what the flow looks like. Because kids can generally know for themselves too, like if they're better rested, you know, they go to school in a better mood and all these things. Um, so I think just talking about the expectations, reminding them of what it's going to be like. If your child's going to school for the first time, I'm finding it very helpful to just talk about the whole experience in general. Um, you know, really trying to help them, in, you know, kind of envision what this whole thing's going to look like and help them to be prepared. I know for me, uh, with my older son and, and daughter, she's in college now, but um, one of the things that worked for me was when I was setting their bedtimes again. This is kind of a two fold approach is so if you set their bedtime really early, the kids mm -hmm. gonna have a problem with this. <laughs> yeah. But what I what I'll trick them into is say, but you can read for an additional half hour to an hour. So if your bed <laughs> and that puts them to sleep like that. It's like it's, it's all magic. the way around. Yeah. And they're thinking and reading again. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, there you have it folks. Uh, this has been KTAR's Eyes on Parenting. I'm Corbin Carson, father of four, one in college, one in kindergarten, one in high school, and one in diapers. Chances are I'm facing a question you're facing. If so, hit me up on Twitter. We can work it out together. I'd like to thank Pearl Chang Esau for joining us. We'll see you next time folks.